Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 84. Day 3084. 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 84, we are on page number 292. And we are dealing with the topic of scatter plot, something that we started yesterday in the yesterday's video, scatter plot. Uh, the problems that we're going to do today, there are two problems that we're going to do today. We did two problems yesterday which were not in the book. But there are two problems that we're going to do today which actually appeared, which are also not in the third edition, but they appeared in the second edition that I'm holding in my hand here, second edition right here, and they appeared also in the first edition of the GRE. For some strange and inexplicable reason, they have taken them out of the third edition. We're going to do them together here, because the whole idea is when a graph is presented in front of you, whether it's a bar graph or a pie chart or, or, or a scatter plot or, or, or whatever it is might be, segmented by a bar graph or line graph, they're going to give you a graph there, there is no data there, they just give you the graph and they ask you two or three questions based on that graph and we have to be able to learn how to read those charts and answer the questions that they're asking by paying close attention. So we need to practice. So if you happen to come across first or second edition of this book that I just showed you, the first edition and the second edition, then the two problems that we're about to do, you will find the exact two problems on page number 294 of the first and the second edition. They appeared in the same page number page 294 first edition and page 294 second edition but it it pertains to the same data set that you see on page 292 on figure 6 turn to page 292 of the third edition that you have on on, on figure 6 where we deal with 50 bicyclists yesterday we did the abridged version the condensed version of it where we dealt with only 10 bicyclists here we're going to do answer the two questions that actually appeared in the exams dealing with the actual problem which has 50 observations so here's the first question the first question says, oh, what percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclists what percentage of the 10, 10 fastest bicyclists had training index of less than of less than 90. One more time. What percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclists? We are not interested in all the 50 bicyclists. We are only going to observe the 10 who finished in the shortest amount of time, who finished the race in the shortest amount of time, the 10 fastest bicyclists, we are being asked what percentage of those 10 individuals had the training index of less than 90. So look at it one more time, look at the figure number 6, I hope the book is in front of you, you must have the book with you all the time. Look at the book in there on page number 292, on page 292, figure number 6, page 292, figure number 6, that's what we're dealing with, figure 6 and we're going to use that figure to answer this question. Now what I've done here, what I've done here is to show you only the portion that deals with what is being asked. Now if you want to answer these questions first on your own, pause the video immediately, answer the question not by looking at these two chunks that I put here because then it makes it easier, uh, look at the entire uh, scatter plot, plot that is given to you in figure 6. Answer the, answer the question and then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a second. Do you understand? So here we go. So here what we see here are all the bicyclists who finished in less than four hours. Of all the bicyclists who finished, look, listen carefully, who finished in less than four hours. These are the hours right here, four, less than four hours. 
they finished the whole build of four hours. Of all of those bicyclists who managed to finish in less than four hours, we are not interested in all of them. Because we are not interested in anyone who managed to take, who managed, who had the training, who had the training of more than 90 units. If they trained for more than 90 units, we are not interested. The question is, what percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclists of the of what percentage of the 10 fastest bicyclists had training index of less than 90? Less than 90. So here are the 10 fastest bicyclists. Here we go. Just essentially go from here, three hours, three and a half hours, four hours, until we hit 10 of them. So I'm going to count them. One, two, looks like this is very low. Three, that's very low. Four, five, six. So, so far, these six people finished in less than three and a half hours. And now we're going to move up a little bit. And here we have seven, eight, nine, and maybe this guy ten. Let's make sure that I did not make a mistake in my counting. So we're going to count them again. We're going to count them again. One, two, three, four. Oh, actually, he should have been four because he's lower than that guy. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There you go. Now, these are the ten people that you see there who were the fastest one. Of these ten people that you see there, how many have had how many have had training index of less than 90 here's the index here's the training index less than 90 this is the demarcation anybody who falls here counts these people are of no interest though. they were not the fastest people they were not the 10 fastest people because they are almost close to four hours they're there just to show you that all the observations we plotted all the observations of less than 100 and less than four hours of which these three are not the 10 fastest so here are the 10 fastest one of those 10 fastest, how many of them had a training of less than 90? Well, we just talked about it before. These three, we were not interested because they did not have a training of less than fast. So there are the 10 individuals of which, of which the way I, the way I enumerated them, individual number 1, 2, and 5 had a training index of more than 90. So these three individuals, 5, 2, and 1, had the training of more than 90. The remaining seven that you see there, the remaining seven that you see there, individual number three, Mr. Four, six, that's three so far, eight, seven, nine, and ten. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, one more time, what percentage of the ten fastest individual, uh, fastest bicyclists had a training index of less than 90? The answer is, these are the people who had less than 90. These are the these circle ones are the 10 fastest ones, of which three of them had the training of more than 90, seven of them had a training of less than 90 of the 10 fastest bicyclists. So it's seven out of 10. In other words, seven out of 10 fastest bicyclists trained for less than 90 units. 70% of the bicyclists who happen to be the fastest one trained for less than 90 units. And that's all it is. There is no calculation. You just have to study the graph. Make sure you take your time because it only takes a one slight mistake. You have to keep track of what you're studying there, the dots that are there, and answer the question. Here's the next one. Here's the next question. Let's leave the question itself, the first question. Here's the second one. It says, of the 50 bicyclists, of the 50 bicyclists, how many how many had training training units of less than 50 and finishing time of less than four and a half hours. How many of the 50 bicyclists that we see there, 50 data, 50 observations that we see there, 50 data points that we see there, happen to have training units of less than 50 and they managed to finish in less than four hours. Again, one more time, I reproduced the picture here, only the part 
that pertains to this question. So this, this thing that you see there, that actually is the trend line, and if you look very closely, it crosses 4.5 and, and 50 right here. 4.5 and, and 50 right here, the line goes something like this and continues in both directions. And we simply have to count all the observations that happen to be less than 50 units of training. That's what it says here. Training units of less than 50. That's everything from here to here. And the finishing time of less than four and a half hours. This is three hours, this is three and a half hours, this is four hours, four and a half. Anything that falls below four and a half and anything that falls below 50. And you just have to count how many observations we see there. And that, those are the ones that you will see there. There's one right here. One, two, three, four, and five. That's all it is. There is no work that is involved here. It is simply a matter of observations. Now, I don't mean observation as in data points. I mean it's a matter of being able to observe what is being presented to you. It's simply a matter of paying attention. That's all it is. That's all it is because all it takes, all it takes is missing just one dot and of course you will get the wrong answer. So the answer to this question is very straightforward. How many of them had, uh, had uh, training units of less than 50 and still managed to finish in less than four and a half hours? The answer is five out of 50. Which five? Well, these five. We just saw them. Here, here's the guy. Who, the guy number one, two, three, four, and five. These five individuals managed to finish in less than four, less than four and a half an hour, despite the fact that that they train for less than fifty units. That's all. That's the end of scatter plot. The next topic that we have on the following page, page two ninety three is the line graph, which is what we're going to do tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Okay? Bye now.